Well, week three, huh? I know. Crazy stuff, right? Crazy stuff. You know, as we get out of week three, come into week four. I, I, I don't know what I expected today. I think I expected a day that was a lot better than what it was. And today was pretty bad. Um, you want to talk about the first first two sets of games yeah you know pretty bad if you didn't want to watch something you had to you probably would have wanted to watch you know something a little bit you know you know not a top 25 team you know you wouldn't want to watch a, you know something like Purdue Syracuse or the team that actually you know hosts the college game day to day in App State the a crazy Hail Mary win or the coach's moment of the week in South Alabama with a fake field goal attempt that completely and utterly failed, by the way, against UCLA. Speaking of UCLA, the basketball schools, undefeated, Indiana unbeaten, North Carolina unbeaten, UCLA unbeaten, Duke unbeaten. Kentucky unbeaten, and the biggest surprise of all, Kansas unbeaten. I'm sitting here perplexed, I'm sitting here confused, I'm sitting here flummoxed, I got all the emotions right now. What are all these basketball schools? Syracuse too, if I didn't say Syracuse before. The basketball schools, man. The basketball schools. I don't, I don't know. You got your foot belt craziness, which is definitely going to be feeding into the storylines, you know, as we continue to march down the path of getting into October. The basketball, again, the basketball schools being undefeated right now is crazy. Like teams that are typically considered basketball schools, they're unbeaten. I don't know how. And if you wanted an FCS over FBS upset tonight, you weren't going to get it from North Dakota State. Arizona ended up beating North Dakota State late. You know, North Dakota State did kind of mess up some things at the end of this game, and I think the Bison fans are pretty shocked. They should be shocked because North Dakota State had this, and they let it slip away. Um, don't worry, it's not going to count against. It's not going to count against the Bison, though. Remember, um, if you follow FCS football, you know that. Losses against FBS teams don't really mean anything at all. Southern Illinois, on the other hand, said, It's okay. We got you. We got you, North. We got you, Bison. We got you, bros. You know, Southern Illinois, they beat Northwestern instead. So, I mean, this wasn't, again, this wasn't what we expected today. You know, Southern Illinois beating Northwestern like that, and North Dakota State losing. You know, we expected an F FBS over, or rather, an FCS over an FBS upset today, but it wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. Good game though. Good game though. It, it certainly beat out the rest of these games today, and unfortunately, we do have to talk about these games today. You know, for the most part. For the most part, things were just you know. This really felt like the first, you know, Cupcake Saturday. Like, my goodness, man. Let's start with Oklahoma, Nebraska. Let's get it out the room. Terrible performance. So bad that Gus Johnson said, I'm out. <laughs> I know he actually got sick, but, but the thought of, you know, Gus Johnson, you know, not wanting to watch Nebraska give up touchdowns to Oklahoma anymore, it's just absolutely hilarious. Is you know, Nebraska... Caught Oklahoma off guard early, but then Dylan Gabriel was like, "Uh-uh, we, we're not, we're not here for that." He put up 230 yards, you know, passing, opened up with a 61-yard TD in which Nebraska just did not want to tackle. And then you know the Sooners also ran for over 300 yards. Eric Gray getting most of those 300 yards, and unfortunately the Huskies line couldn't protect Casey Thompson very well at all four sacks and most of those were in the first half I mean it was just rough to watch this game for very long I left because not only was that game boring 
Georgia, South Carolina was absolutely terrible, and you should start saying Stetson Bennett for Heisman. I think I think it's about time to start saying it. I questioned it. I even you know made a question about it. And I was like, yeah. Do do we start saying Stetson Bennett for Heisman because he continues to impress the Dogs' defense? Yeah, they allowed a touchdown today, but they continue to dominate. South Carolina couldn't do anything on offense in this game. Barely got over 300 yards themselves. The Gamecocks did. So disappointment there. You got BYU Oregon again. Unfortunately, I don't think we expected this result. I think we expected a lot, a game that was a lot closer. Instead, Bo Nix decides to play like you know the good version of himself. He he put up five TDs on the day. And the BYU Cougars just couldn't get anything going, whether it be on the ground, you know, or, you know, Jaron Hall, you know, at times, you know, just couldn't get anything going. You know, BYU kept stalling out. And, you know, yeah, BYU scored a lot of points late, but that's too little too late. You were already down by a lot. You know, you were already down 38-14 at one point. Not a good look. Not a good look for the Cougars. Not going anywhere. I suspect you'll be dropped all the way down to some random bowl now, I bet. Um, the injuries that the Cougs have, you know, a lot of guys are still recovering from injuries, so, you know, something's got to give there. BYU has more tough tests remaining because, yeah, there's, there's still some tough tests we're going um, left to go. Ole Miss Georgia Tech was another one as Zach Evans, Quinshaw Jenkins. They led a 360 16 yard rushing route. And the Yellow Jackets, they got shut out in this game. Just absolutely disappointing. Ole Miss still can't figure out their quarterback situation, but at least the running game you know, decided to do a lot of damage. It had Penn State Auburn, a game I thought was going to be, you know, definitely one of my picks for game of the week. But instead, the Tigers couldn't even stop Sean Clifford, Nick Singleton, or the Nittany Lion defense. They took the ball away from Auburn four times. You had T.J. Finley and Calzada out there. Both of them couldn't do anything. You know, Penn State ran all over Auburn and, you know, buried them, put them in the dust. Definitely not a good look there. If you did want to watch something, you know, in that, you know, window, you that 2.30, 3.30 window, you should have watched, you know, Cal Notre Dame, in which Notre Dame finally got a win. I know, right? Insanity. Crazy stuff. And then late in the late window, you had a, a trio of games that were kicking off at various times, but the first of these was Texas Tech NC State. Unfortunately for Texas Tech, they couldn't get anything going. You know, four takeaways by the Wolfpack defense. Aiden White had two of those picks, including a pick six. And the Wolfpack, you know, despite the fact that, you know, the offense didn't really do too much. They only had, like, what, 270 yards total on offense. NC State was able to put Texas Tech away, get themselves ready, you know, for a showdown with Clemson soon. And, you know... Other, other other games are going to be happening down the line for the Wolfpack that they got to get prepared for, if you get what I mean. And then you had Michigan State Washington, in which Michael Penix Jr. and and the Huskies they showed out, they balled out. Penix had you know 397 yards, more touchdowns, and then you got Jalen Polk getting 153 of those yards. Had three of the four touchdowns. Is you know the Spartans' pass defense looks rough, and really I thought it was the rush defense at first. But then you know you had to really look back at it, and Penix just you know threw it all over Washington, or rather threw it all over Michigan State. My bad. You know it, it's it's an improvement. You know we thought you know we thought this Michigan State. Pass defense would get a little bit improved, but no, that is not the case. They got torched. Terrible. Terrible performance by Sparty. Not a good look for Mel Tucker, either. You know, thought these issues were fixed, but they're not. 
Then you had Miami, Texas A&M to, you know, really cap it off. And unfortunately, this game was rough to watch. You know, Max Johnson had to step in for Haynes King because Haynes King wasn't delivering the goods. And he didn't do anything either. Guess who did do something? The A&M defense. Oh, they came up in a big way because Miami could only muster three field goals. We're talking Tyler Van Dyke had no connection with his receivers at all. We had we had multiple, you know, drop catches and everything. We had multiple muff punts in this game. Miami couldn't get the one that would have helped them. You know, again, there were just too many mistakes by Miami in this game and they just I mean, they, they they just couldn't do anything. Like, it, it it's it's kind of disappointing. You know, another year of Miami. You know, in a big time non conference game. Because last year against Michigan State, this is the same thing that happened. And once again this year, they blew the pooch. They 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 they, they screwed themselves. You know, got you got you gotta have you know something a little bit better. You know, on offense than a three field goals. You need touchdowns, and you didn't get anything. Disappointment all around for the Hurricanes. Now A&M has to head in to Jerry World for a big-time matchup next Saturday night. And we'll talk about that team, who they're facing in a moment here. As we go through the other games real quick, um, Kentucky, they shot at Youngstown State. Will Levis, three TDs, good stuff right there. Richard Reese ran for 156, three TDs for Baylor, and you know the Bears they bounced back after a you know performance against BYU in which they didn't do too well last week. UConn got shot out against Michigan. Blake Corm had five touchdowns in this game. Alabama took out their frustrations, you know, on ULM. Bryce Young was out here balling. He had four touchdowns. Will Anderson Jr. had a pick six. There was a block punt in this game that got returned for a TD as well, if I'm not mistaken. Alabama, they, they're they still number three in my book, but, you know, definitely, definitely good stuff right there by the Crimson Tide bouncing back. There's still issues that need to be answered, but they bounce back. Wake Forest, on the other hand, uh, that defense ain't looking too good. Sam Hartman, he's he, he's been balling out, but that defense... Oh boy, can't allow 36 to Liberty. This is this isn't Malik Willis led Liberty. This is a Liberty without him. You still allow 36 points. You better be lucky y'all stop that two point conversion, because I would have I would have laughed if Liberty won this game. I really would have. But I, I, I'm not laughing at this. Like, this is scary right here. And I'm talking about, you know, Ohio State putting up nearly 800 yards on offense against Toledo. C.J. Stroud took it easy and threw five touchdowns like it was nothing. That's that's, that's the crazy stuff right there. Tennessee, uh, they put up 63 on Akron. At least Akron scored this time. They got their money, and they scored six points. But Tennessee put up 63 on them. Jalen Hyatt, definitely a highlight guy there. Caught five passes for 166 and two TDs. Uh, Akron, it's okay, buddy. You, you, you'll, I bet you'll get some wins in MAC play. It's okay. Um, UAPB took on Oklahoma State. I mean, Spencer Sanders, four TD passes, and these were all in the first half. So you know the Cowboys comfortably cruise. Um. The rest of these games here, oh my goodness, Not notwithstanding the Liberty Wake Forest game, we're talking the rest of these games have some trouble, you know, with them, you know, at least, at least most of these, you know, like San Diego State got blown out by Utah, Cam Rising had four TDs in this game, USC took care of Fresno State, I thought it was going to be a little bit closer, but Caleb Williams and that Trojan defense said nah, and Fresno, a lot of their guys got injured as well in this game. So, you know, it is what it is there. So USC, Utah, the Pac-12 still in it. Yes, the Pac-12 is still in it by virtue of Utah, USC, Washington, and Oregon 
all winning. They're all in this. So nobody's eliminated. You know, I, I, did, I did say don't, you know, don't overreact, you know, t two weeks ago. I said don't overreact like this two weeks ago, and a lot of people ran with it. You, I, I joked about it. I know I joked about it, but don't write Pac-12 out just yet. We, st we still got, you know, another month or so before we can do that, you know, hopefully. <laughs> but, um, yeah, going back to these other games real quick, you know, you had Missouri State taking on Arkansas. And, you know, Missouri State had a lead on Arkansas for quite a while. Like they were up 17 to nothing at one point. They were up 27 to 17 at one point. Um, at least the Hogs escaped with you know 21 straight points that you know Missouri State couldn't answer back to, including a, a punt return TV by Bryce Stevens. But that's got to be concerning. I get it. Top five FCS team, by the way. So you know, maybe maybe it's the transfer portal, which again is impacting college football in a crazy way already this season. Yeah, again, basketball schools are unbeaten. The fun belt is very much relevant, you know, and some other stuff. But um, Arkansas, that's got to be a little bit concerning, you know. That then again, you guys are playing Texas A&M next week, so we'll see how that goes. Florida had to survive, you know, with the college kickers moment of the week from USF completely botching a, 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 a late field goal to try and tie the game. And Anthony Richardson, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what a lot of us were thinking, you know, two weeks ago. I, I should have known because this is the same Anthony Richardson that did the litter last year. I don't, I don't know why I, I, I trust myself. This is one of those cold takes that I be having, which happens a lot. They happen a lot, and Florida, you know, having to survive USF like this is just not a good look. And then Pitt, they took care of Western Michigan. Bonnie Conda had 131 on the ground. And, you know, Nick Yarnell was the guy at, at quarterback in this game. And he, he he did the game manager type thing very well. He did it well. That's that's what you got to do. And with all your quarterbacks out, you got to be a game manager in a big-time situation. Just got to tough it out. Clemson, on the other hand, I don't know what in the world's wrong with Clemson. Like, yeah, Will Shipley was the game changer here with two TDs, 139 yards on the ground rushing. But this offense still, you know, was kind of in a bad situation with Louisiana Tech for quite some time. And I don't know why, you know, they, they, they got to do a little bit better, man. They gotta do a little bit better on offense. This this shouldn't be a thing. Like like this game was close until the fourth quarter. This game was close. Should be a happening. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. There, there's there's gotta be there's gotta be somebody that can be Clemson in the ACC. And it's looking like it's gonna be crazy in the ACC this year. You know, it's looking like it. I can see it. Uh, there's a lot of contenders in the ACC that want a chance to knock off Pitt. You know the ACC champion, you know, from last year. And, you know, Clemson's looking to put themselves back in a good position, but they just can't do it, you know, with the way they've been playing. they got to play better. And then UTSA, Texas, I was a little bit scared coming into this. A lot of people were a little bit scared coming into this. But then B. John Robinson said, relax. Three touchdowns, 202 yards total, most of them on the ground. And... Texas eventually pulled away, but it was it was a little scary at first, but, you know, because UTSA had a lead, um, but, you know, again, B. John, Roshan Johnson also contributing, a pick six, you know, things got moving for the Horns, the things got moving, and, you know, they will, con they will retain their ranking, you know, if you, if you ask me, I would, now, now I would rank the Texas law courts, not wouldn't have ranked them last week. I would do that now. Um, and they'd be like number 25 if I had a poll. So, you know, like act, like actually at number 25, I would not put them any higher than that with the way, you know, things have been going for them at the moment. But hopefully week four will be a little bit better. I think things are going to work out for week four that will be a little bit better. So until Monday night, 
with that double header being you know a thing I actually wait hold up I forgot about the PLL um, PLL ends tomorrow so during halftime tomorrow of the NFL games the late NFL games anyway we'll be recapping the PLL I forgot about that and then you know Monday we'll be talking the NFL so um, until then guys what did y'all learn this week? Cause you know I'm 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 still kind of shocked that all these basketball schools are unbeaten. So go ahead, just just like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do whatever you need to do, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, cause it's gonna be 3 a.m. on the East Coast, 2 a.m. here. I gotta get this uploaded. <laughs> Take care, everybody.